In this video, I would like to talk about the 3D Secure 2 authentication standard. Our payment integrations in the demo application fully support this new authentication standard. When you check the Braintree and the Stripe integrations, you will see that our code explicitly uses this new standard. However, our PayPal integration doesn't have any additional uh, code for this standard because PayPal should take care of this by itself. But you might be wondering what this 3D Secure 2 authentication standard is, and you might find out that it doesn't even apply to you. However, you might find out that it is indeed applicable to you, and then I think it's good to know uh, what it is exactly. I suggest checking out this uh, Stripe summary about 3D Secure 2, but of course I will tell you about the most important uh, aspects of it. So the 3D Secure standard aims to reduce fraud and, provided, and provide added security to online payments. Beginning late 2019, banks are expected to gradually start supporting a new version of 3D Secure. 3D Secure, 3DS2, 3D Secure 2, 3DS2 introduces frictionless authentication and improves the purchase experience compared to 3D Secure 1. It's expected to be the main card authentication method used to meet the upcoming strong customer authentic authentication SCA requirements in Europe and a key mechanism for business to request exemptions to SCA. So in short, 3D Secure 2 should help with fraud management. This means that if your credit card is stolen, then it will not be as easy to pay with your card as it has been before the introduction of 3DS2. In an earlier video, I showed you that we have our Stripe integration and uh, you might see a model window appearing. As you can see, the card numbers are put in and then a model window will appear. Of course, this is just a test model, model window, but what happens is that if you are paying with your card, it might happen that after you click on pay, or you know, in our case, the click to complete purchase button in our demo application, then a model window will appear. And actually what happens, I mean, of course, we are just uh, using the test environment in our demo application, but in production, what might happen when you are actually making a payment with Stripe or Braintree is that you will get a model window and on your smartphone, you will get a push notification or you might get a text message with a code that you have to provide in this model window in order to uh, complete the purchase. So if someone steals your credit card, but they don't have access to your smartphone or your mobile phone to which you get this one-time password, then they will simply not be able to use your card for purchases. It is very important that this model window will not pop up all the time because 3D Secure introduces frictionless authentication and it means that if your bank trusts the site from which you are uh, making the purchase, then they might say that, okay, we don't need to send a push notification to you. Stripe or Braintree or whatever payment gateway you use can uh, go forward with the payment and charge you. For example, maybe if uh, the purchase is under 30 euros, the um, bank, the issuer of the card will say that, okay, if it's under 30 euros, we don't care about this, uh, this 3D secure authentication. So we will simply not send you a push notification. And this would be the frictionless authentication. But in order to achieve this frictionless authentication, you should provide as much data as possible to, to Stripe, who can provide it to the, to the uh, bank or the issuer of your credit card as possible. Later, when we are integrating Braintree and Stripe, you will see that we are providing the uh, first name of the customer, last name of the customer, email of the customer, billing address, and so on and so on. So we will provide all these data to try to achieve frictionless authentication. However, as a developer, you always have to assume that the authentication will not be frictionless, so you have to assume that a model window will pop up and your application will be able to handle it. However, the most important thing about 3DS2 is that it is only applicable if the uh, merchant is situated in Europe and the buyer is also situated in Europe. So if you want to integrate Braintree or Stripe 
for your business and you're situated, for example, in the USA, then you actually don't have to think about the 3D S2 authentication standard. But in this course, of course, we assume that you are in Europe and your customers will come from Europe, so you will need to integrate the 3D S2 authentication standard into your application. But even if you don't need it, maybe you will need it in the future. And I think it is beneficial to see how you can enable the, uh, this authentication standard for Stripe and for Braintree. So I would like to talk about one particular issue with uh, 3D Secure 2. Later on in the course, you will see that for a 3D Secure check, we will provide the first name and the last name for Braintree and for Stripe. Now, if you want to provide the first name and last name for 3D Secure to um, achieve a frictionless authentication, or at least try to achieve a frictionless authentication, you have to keep in mind that these fields, so these data, cannot contain uh, characters that are non-ASCII characters. What I will going to do, I will fail a validation. As you can see, I put the German umlaut a correct characters for the first name and the last name, and although I will provide uh, valid test details. I'm going to fail the validation because these two fields have non-ASCII characters. All right, okay, we already failed the validation. So first name and last name must contain letters only from the English alphabet. In our checkout controller, so we will talk about this more, so don't, don't worry if, you, if you're not familiar with this at this point. There is a validation, a custom validation rule that I created, and during the Braintree integration, I will talk about it more. But basically, this custom validation rule makes sure that only characters from the English alphabet are uh, accepted for a first name and for a last name, so for these two fields. And the reason for this is that we want to pass this information for a 3D secure check, and Braintree confirmed that if there are non-ASCII characters in these fields, so, you know, for the first name and last name, then we are going to receive a validation error. Stripe, I believe, is more flexible a bit than Braintree, because if you provide non-ASCII characters, then they will just simply remove these ASCII characters. However, you don't want to uh, provide a first name and a last name that uh, Stripe will have to change for your 3D secure check. So, in our demo application, we are simply making sure that no non-ASCII characters can go to the 3D secure check. However, it might be problematic for a lot of customers, so if you don't want to have this validation rule, you can simply remove these new only ASCII characters validation rule when we are integrating Braintree and Stripe, and I think that that PayPal, my PayPal integration also uses this validation, so, so you can just simply uh, delete these validation rules from the checkout controller if you want your customers to be able to uh, use ASCII characters in their names. However, if you want to do that, then you should also delete uh, some lines from the Braintree uh, JS file. So. We have this Braintree JS template.blade.php file, and in this file we are we have the first name and last name. So yeah, so when you have this 3D secure parameters variable here, and you can just simply delete these two lines. It is not compulsory to provide the first name and the last name for the 3D secure check, but of course, the more information you provide, the more likely that the customer will have a frictionless um, payment flow. On the other hand, it could be very frustrating to your customers that they cannot use any letters that are not from the English alphabet, so you have to sort of make this decision. If you want to keep it the way it is in the demo application, so you, you won't... Um, delete anything from the controller here and uh, you won't delete anything from the Braintree.js file or you go ahead and you delete the, uh, the validation rules here, the, these two new only ASCII characters validations and then you have to remove these two lines and of course from the Stripe.js file you also have to remove a few lines. And I have to scroll down a bit to find them. So here, yes, you have to remove this one line actually from your stripe.js.blade.php uh, file. 
because if you remove only these new only ASCII characters validations, but you still provide the first name and last name to Stripe and Braintree, then the 3D S2 workflow might not work for you at all, even in the sandbox environment. In our demo application, we just wanted to make sure to go ahead with 3D S2 in as a strict way as possible. So this is why we have this very strict validation rule. And then we are passing the, the first name and last name to Braintree and Stripe respect, respectively. However, if you want to change this demo application and build upon it, then uh, I would uh, like to ask you to uh, follow uh, these, uh, this advice and to remove this line, uh, these two lines and the uh, custom validation rules. And don't worry if you, at this point, if you don't know what I'm talking about exactly, you can check the Braintree integration and check the Stripe integration, and then you can come back to this video. And I think that at that point, so after you uh, finish with the Braintree and the Stripe sections, it will be very obvious to you what you have to do and uh, what is going to happen if you remove, uh, remove these uh, parts of the code.